why am I so zoomed in now? That's bizarre. That's the wrong camera because it's facing. No. No. So zoomed in. Let's just go with it. Let's just make sure both are lined and go with it. Don't worry about the camera. We'll work with it. Really? Yeah. We don't have time on that one. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if we're live now. Okay. I have sound when zoomed. Okay. Um, Hopefully it's working yeah. now. Um, give us some feedback if you can hear us, and, and if you can see us, and if we're we're live. We had to restart some things, and this Facebook quality is not very good right now. <clears throat> quality settings, change, change. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there we go. Okay, it looks like. Oh. I don't know what that means, but let's see if we are live on Facebook now. I don't think settings about that are live. Okay. Sorry about this. Okay, 12 let's... minutes ago. Are we still live? Okay, here we go. Six more comments. Let's see if we can move forward. Yes, it's live YouTube. Okay. And we are moving to... But are we live comments. on Facebook? Are okay. we live on Facebook right now? That's the question. Can you hear and see us? Okay. No audio. What? It just went to last week's broadcast. Yeah. What's going on? It asked about, do you want to cancel this? And it, we didn't hit the cancel button, so. Okay. Well, this is a mystery. Let's see if we can't hear you. See, look at this. What, what's it doing here? Cancel. Why is it doing that? I don't know. I've never seen that before. Oh, you know why? Why? Because this is not a live broadcast. This is... <laughs> replaying what we put up okay so it was published 13 minutes ago so we are oh there's another one oh my god this is a mess so i don't think we're streaming live right now on facebook okay andrea says she sees both of us hello from new york city hi andrea so, Teresa says it's not on facebook which fits with what we're seeing on our broadcast. We just don't have good quality. So we are just going to go with YouTube and we're going to put a post up on Facebook that says um, we are live on YouTube. You got to go here because this is just not a good situation. Yeah, we've got yeah, we've got decent internet, but don't understand what's going on. What if on you with clicked our... on the Facebook icon over there on the left? Just Facebook. Yeah, here. what if you click that? That's for setting it up. That's for putting it here. But we've already got it here. But for some reason, we have low quality connection and we just aren't going to make it. So we just have to go on here and say, please join us on YouTube. And we're going to get started right now. Actually, why don't you, you want to start talking about Sure. Medical? Okay, I'm going to start talking because there's a lot to go over um, for medical stuff. And all of us have medical issues in our lives and um it, you know coverages are important um I, you know steve's going to throw in some statistics but i'm just going to share that the first thing we're going to talk about is understanding your insurance and um no matter what policy you have whether it's affordable care act or whether it's a private policy or whether it's a state policy Yep. Or a flow sheet. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, you need to know your need policy. You need to know your deductible. You need to know your co-pays. You need to know if there's a fee for an annual physical or if that's free. 
And if you're a woman, there should be a woman's check that's free. You need to know what your coinsurance is. Is it 70, 30, 60, 40, 80, 20? What are you liable for in the case of a hospitalization? Um, you need to know um, what's covered. <clears throat> if you have Affordable Care Act, you will have your x-rays and your blood work covered. Um, you will have things like occupational therapy covered. Um, if you have a private insurance, not necessarily is all that covered. You need to know what your policy is. You need to request a policy book and you need to read it. And if you have questions, you need to call and find out. Um, Becky had knee surgery for a torn ACL a while back, and the amount that was billed was $25,000. The actual contracted rate that the insurance paid was $1,800. So if we did not have insurance, we would have thought we needed to pay $25,000. But because we had insurance, it was $1,800 that the insurance paid, and I don't know what we ended up paying out of pocket. Um, but it was less than that. Um, oh, here it is. Here's the breakdown. Steve wrote it down. $1,800 $1, was what was billed for the hospital, $700 for the doctor, $300 for the anesthesiologist, $50 for the initial office visit. Maybe that is what we ended up paying mm -hmm. out of all that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd like to have coupons that took 79% or 80% yes. off. Um, and if the amount, we had a $5,000 cap and if the amount went over five thousand dollars we would only pay thirty percent um up to the next ten thousand right. so you're talking about there's deductibles which was um a five thousand dollar deductible right there is coinsurance which is the amount you pay when the insurance bills so if the, if the provider bills the insurance um a certain amount they have a contracted rate that the insurance company will cover and then we're responsible for paying some that's the co-insurance right. right and the co-insurance that you pay goes toward your deductible and then most insurance policies have a cap where they say if you spend x number of dollars out of pocket after that you're covered 100 percent right or a certain percentage so it's you, you gotta understand this stuff because otherwise you're you're going to be you liable can be for, taken advantage of also well, yeah you can you can pay more than you should um, so let's, let's talk about some of the questions you ought to be asking. Like when you go into the doctor's office and the doctor says, you need to pay me a $50 copay. You need to look at your insurance card. Right. And see what it says. Right. Sometimes they're right, but sometimes they're wrong. And so you need to know what your policy right. is. Right. But this is another case, uh, classic case of why budgeting is so important. Why a household budget is important because, you know, if you can calculate out how many people are in your family and how many office visits you'll be making in a year, then you could put that copay money as one of your budget categories and have it in your budget. So make sure that med medical is one of those things that people oftentimes do not budget for. And we're not going to touch on <clears throat> prescriptions this week. Prescriptions will be mm -hmm. next, next week. But really, there should be some money going, being set aside to cover medical stuff. Right, so if you have four people in your family and you figure you're all gonna go in once a year for a, 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 a sick visit, a, well, just a preventative visit, those are supposed to be covered 100% by insurance. Now. Right. So you don't have to pay anything for that. But if you're gonna go in, maybe you, you all go in once, once a year for a sick visit and that's $35, well, that's $140 for right. family right there. And if there's any medication, that could be 20 or $40 a person. So that's another, let's say, eighty dollars. You know, add. What we do is we kind of figure worst case scenario. So let's right. double that to right. so make that five hundred dollars out of pocket. So that's like so think, forty dollars a month. Uh, yeah, I think what we figured is the average <clears throat> family should be putting aside forty to fifty dollars a month just for copays and 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 right. prescriptions. That's right. not even counting um, over the counter me medication. Um, that's not counting anything more serious. Right. So then every insurance policy will show you your maximum out-of-pocket OOP, right? right? And and we call it, like, if, if you had a catastrophic illness where you were hospitalized, um, had multiple doctor visits, multiple whatever, and you maxed out your insurance, what is the maximum you would pay? And in our case, it's like 
ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So what we encourage families to do, and this is this is a huge mountain, but once you get your debt paid off and you built your emergency fund, a small emergency fund, you make it your goal to have a, a, a bigger emergency fund that can cover all of your medical expenses yes. in, in case you get hit with it. Because medical bankruptcies are, I think they're up 50%. It's, and, uh, medical it's bankruptcies are the first or second reason for divorce. Right. Well, the, and, uh, uh, and for medical. causing, for declaring bankruptcy. Right. Um, so okay. It's, it's really, it's really a serious problem. We, uh, we're coaching a family a while ago that has had some serious medical issues, and they owe tens of thousands of dollars to doctors in two states or three states, and it's it just weighs heavy on okay, them. Okay, talk about those statistics right there. So, so our encouragement is, and we're going to cover how to negotiate and communicate with medical providers so that you don't end up just carrying these debts and owing people forever. Right. <clears throat> but, you know, with... Um, about eight years ago, we first uh, produced this top produced on this topic, and we created an audio file. We'll give you a link for that in a little bit. Uh, at that time, sixteen percent of people did not have health insurance. Right now, with the Affordable Care Act, and and I know I have strong opinions about it. I don't think it's the best possible way to manage health care, but it is what it is right now. And hopefully, we'll come up with something better in the future. Uh, right now, eight percent. Of people don't are have uninsured. Insurance. So the good thing is more people are insured now. The, but, the bad but, thing is that the price is just catastrophic. It has, but <clears throat> you know, a lot of people can qualify for their state medical program if you're low income and you may not even know it. Mm-hmm. So go through the effort of well, filling everything out when you apply, to find out. When you apply for the Affordable Care Act, they will evaluate your income. Yes. And if your income is low enough, They'll recommend that you go on your state's policy. Right, right. So that's part of the application and, process. You know, we are <clears> using <throat> notes tonight because we have so much that we want to cover. And this is actually a speech that we give um, at some of the financial conferences that we go to. So, you know, don't be um, put off at all by our notes. We just want to make sure we get you as much good information as possible. Do you and, know what percentage of people in America regularly take prescription drugs? I'm not talking about taking... Taking um, a second, taking something like uh, an antibiotic when you're sick. I'm talking about regular, regular monthly regularly monthly bill, uh, prescription. It's very high. It is. Well, it's not. I mean, not very high. It's it's about fifty five percent. So between the two of us, one of us is going to be taking it. If you're a room of four people, two of them are going to be taking it. Right, but we're going to go into prescription drugs next week. For right now, we're going to just we we need to zip through because we have a lot to cover tonight. But you know, there are. Um, what do they call Alternative it? Alternative types of right. insurance. They aren't really insurance. They're more like cost, cost sharing. sharing. And we have a friend who just signed up for um, Samaritan's S- S- Samaritan or Christian Healthcare. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. CHM. We'll give you a link for it. And basically, it's not insurance. You oh, are. It's right here. Yeah, I know. You're covered for certain expenses. And if your expenses go over a certain amount, they'll pay. But up to that deductible amount, you're responsible for negotiating with the doctor a cash pay amount. But the nice thing is that rather than his family was going to have to pay like $1,200 a month for insurance coverage, they have two small kids and the husband, the wife is covered because she's a teacher with the, with the school district. It's going to be $1,200 for three of them. He's paying three or $400 a month, but he's still setting aside right. another six or $700 a month to cover his expenses. Right. Well, they they have one thing that he said was really cool is they have a doctor on call right. 24-7. And so when one of their kids had a rash, they got the doctor on the phone, took pictures, sent it to the doctor. The doctor diagnosed and prescribed something over the phone. He, it's an amazing way to do it. It could be a little. It can be. I don't know. But think about it. It didn't cost them an office visit. They got an answer right away. And so there's there's some new technology being used. There's new methodology being used in the insurance world. And I think th- those are good things, but you just have to, you have to know. You have to know your world. kids and how sick they are and whether they really do need to physically go see a doctor for a diagnosis. Um, oh gosh, there's just so much to share about this. Um, there's so many thoughts running through my brain. Um, you can't, you cannot afford to not have medical insurance. And even if it's a high deductible for hospitalization, 
literally a medical mm. emergency can wipe you out financially. So you have to have medical insurance. Look, uh, Tara, Tara just said that health sharing ministries do not cover every expense. And you need to read very carefully because they do not cover a thing like cancer. And well, there, there well they won't. Excu- that's what I was going to say. There are some people with chronic health conditions that won't be accepted by some of those cost sharing mm-hmm. um, medical industries. Also, we know people that have chronic health conditions and literally one person has gone to work at a part-time job for the medical benefits alone. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, oh, I I don't know if we've ever written an article, but I know that places like Starbucks will give you medical benefits if you work 20 hours a week. So there are times when you have some situations in your family and you need to be covered medically and and mom or dad, one of them needs to be working one of those part-time jobs where you can get medical benefits. Yeah. Um, okay. That that may be your family. I don't know. You need to figure that out. But we've, we've got to move on because we have so much. I'm going to share one other link. Okay. And that is temporary insurance. Okay. If, if you have employer insurance and you switch jobs and you want to make sure you're still covered. Yes. We like going to e-health insurance because they still sell uh, temporary policies, okay. and they're relatively inexpensive. There's no uh, underwriting involved. Right. You can get it. You can send the check in today, or send the payment in today, and be covered today. And if you qualify, it's, it's important that right. you have coverage. Okay, let's talk about these. Okay. We go so ahead and talk tax about. advantages. Now we are not CPAs, but we do know a little bit about um, tax advantage accounts for medical expenses, and these can be really advantageous to reducing your taxable income so you pay less in taxes and you pay for the expenses like medical care with pre-tax dollars. So that saves you between 15 and 28%. Now, I don't know what the new taxes are this year. I haven't studied that, but um, one of one of the, the ones that we like, if you have a high deductible insurance, and I believe it has to be $5,000 or more, is an HSA, a health savings account. And not every bank will offer those, but we did find a bank near us that did. Yeah. And we have an HSA and they're tax deferred, right. which is wonderful. So you can put money in there and you don't have to use it up this year. An right. HSA rolls over from year to year. That's right. There's and, a limit on how much you can put in. Right. I believe it's around $5,000 a year. Maybe it's 7000 I can't remember. Somewhere but, between five and seven. Limited. And so you deposit your money in, into the HSA, and then when you go to the doctor or go to the pharmacy, you have a separate debit card for that account, and you pay for it out of that account, now the, and you keep your receipts. The HSA cannot be used for over-the-counter medications, right. but it can be used for prescription eyeglasses. Mm-hmm. It can be used for dental work, where you go to see a, a, an actual licensed dentist. Mm-hmm. It can be used for prescriptions, co-pays, chiropractors, chiropractors, hospital. Yeah. Anybody that is um, legitimately licensed. Um, it, it may be usable for some alternative healthcare methods, but you're going to have to do some checking. Do some research. But, uh, at the time we wrote this speech, it was a $6,500 limit. I think you... I it's think increased. It I'm pretty sure 7, it's 75, now, but... If you're in your 50s or 60s, and you're maxing out your IRAs or Roth or, or 401ks, and you have money that you want to quote unquote shelter, knowing that as you get older, you're more likely going to be spending a lot of money on medical care. This would be a good place to put another chunk of change. Okay, look at that. Error try again. I, not, it's probably the link that I put in there. So I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. It may not work. I'm trying to send a link to you guys for e-health insurance, but it may it not will, It may it. not set it. So we'll put okay. something in the in the notes in the underneath notes. the video. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second kind of tax deferred account uh, is called a flex spending account. Uh, they call them FSAs. And those can be used if you have children in child care, if you do elder care for your parents, mm-hmm. if you um, have medical expenses. There are in every company, not every company, but several. There are several different flavors of FSAs, and there'll be certain limits. Sometimes money won't roll over. Correct. Other times it will. You have to read carefully. But if you have children in daycare, being able to shelter two hundred to four hundred dollars a month 
in pre-tax dollars is a huge saving. It is. So that is a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing to be able to use as your employer opposite. Some employers actually fund flex spending accounts or, for the employee up to a certain amount. Right. Okay. Um, HRAs, health reimbursement arrangements, <clears throat> some employers will be self-insured. And so they will say that they'll add to the employee's compensation a certain amount of dollars um, for to cover deductibles. And they'll also increase your coverage or you'll earn extra coverage if you go through health screenings, like right. having your blood pressure checked or going to uh, – uh, a workout. If you work out, and so you many need to be careful. You do need to be careful about some of those because some of them, I feel like, can be an invasion of your privacy if they want to monitor you on something. <coughs> so you need to look at what it is, and you may not want to choose all the options. Okay. <coughs> I, I don't see a problem if, if somebody says, "I'll give you a hundred dollars a month or two hundred dollars a month if you work out two days a week and prove it." You know that's. That's a choice you make, and we think working out, exercise is an important thing, even if it's walking. Yes. But look into those things because that's just a way, number one, to save money on health care, but number two, to live a healthier lifestyle. <clears throat> All right, so let's, there? Let's, let's talk about how to resolve medical disputes. Okay. Because, All right. Because dealing with doctors' offices yes. and hospitals when they bill you for things, number one, if you're sick, and then you get the bill two or three months later, that's not a very fun process. Yeah, actually, let's take a minute and, and make some comments and respond to some comments. Do we have some comments? Okay, let's see. Um, Tara says, don't get sick, people. Uh, we, need, we need to try that doctor on call. We haven't yet, uh, but do not have time to go to the doctor with vest. Yeah, that, that's on the medical right. sharing program, but actually a lot of insurance companies yeah, they are, some are having are. nurses on calls and some doctors on calls. Right. So I would check it out. We got a friend who is a doctor in Papua New Guinea. He was actually our GP, and there'd be times we'd Skype him, text Skype, and say, this is going on, what do you think? And he, he was so good at diagnosing things. He was just right. an amazing Why don't you thing. just click that, that X and just get rid of that so it's out of the way down at the bottom there? Okay, okay, let's see what else we got. Any more questions? Where Where are the new ones? At the top or the bottom? I don't know. Let's see. We have meds in our budget, says Teresa, since my husband and I take lots of meds. That's good. You, okay. You know what, what it costs. All so right, you budget they budget for it. For it. <clears throat> um, I don't know what that is. Um, uh, that should be just deleted, that one comment. I'm not going to do that right now. Okay. Uh, prevention. What Stephen and Annette talked about last, last week, week is eating healthier. We're going to talk about 10 things you can do to stay healthier right. at the end of this broadcast. Right. Thing. And then next week, we're going to do a follow-up on this with our five rules for hospital stays, how to get more from a doctor visit, uh, how to save on prescription drugs, and how to save on medical equipment. Uh, oh, and dental care. Dental care and the common cold. The cure for the cure. common cold. We've we have got, discovered the cure for the common and cold. And today we're going to, like, yeah. we just talked about insurance. We, we're talking about the tax advantage accounts. We're, we're going to go into talking about medical dis claim disputes or resolving medical claims. And then we're going to talk about 10 ways to stay healthier. So, so Andrea says, Annette, take vitamin C. That will help. Tell her how many milligrams of vitamin C you yeah, can Yeah, I, sometimes I take up to 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C if I'm sick. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Okay. But we're going to talk about what we do next week right? Uh, when we're sick. And it, it really helps us get through colds pretty quick. Okay. So you're overwhelmed. You've got medical claims. Some of you out there have a lot of medical claims. And what I would say is um, there's a company called BillAdvocates.com. Mm -hmm. And if you have like more than $5,000 in medical bills right now, you may want to contact BillAdvocates.com. Um, they are, I think, reasonable, and they help you resolve those medical claims. And uh, the money that they save you is so worth it. Okay, so let's let's talk they about take, some stories. They take a percentage of what they save you. So right. If you have ten thousand dollars worth of bills, but they negotiate it down to twenty seven hundred dollars. Right. They've saved you uh, seventy three hundred dollars. They will charge you a percentage, and they describe it up front, and you agree to it. So let's say they charged you 10% uh, of that, so $730. Would it be worth it to get rid of $10,000 and only pay $2,700 and then pay another $700? So you pay $3,400. Right. So 
that's worth it to yes, have a bulldog it's totally worth on it. your side yes. who knows how to, to go through. Okay, so back in, was it 1999? It was in the 90s sometime. I had a kidney stone. And when they say kidney stones are like giving birth, they're correct. I, I mean, I have given birth and kidney stones are so painful. Anyway, when I had that kidney stone, I had never had a kidney stone before. It's the only one I've ever had. And I really didn't know what was happening. And I thought maybe I had a tubal pregnancy or something. So we went to a hospital where my OBGYN has uh, doctor rights. And what we found out after the whole ordeal was over and I passed the kidney stone the next morning was that um, that hospital technically was not on our plan. It was at one point in time, but they had changed. Right. <clears throat> and so that thus began the long, um, the long conversations with trying to resolve these medical claims. We eventually got them to treat the hospital as an in Network. Uh, in network provider because we explained we didn't know what was happening we thought maybe there was a tubal pregnancy we needed to go where my obg by n was and, and, and um, in that case we had to submit a letter in writing mm -hmm. and it was it was a little tense we didn't know what would happen but they were reasonable and they we, were. Had, we had very logical reasons for doing what we did and we were polite uh, yet firm and it worked out okay anyway we're company. not going to go into all the details but there was a long, a long negotiation process. What I want to share though, is it takes persistence. It takes literally putting together a folder. And every time you make a phone call, you write down the date, you write down the time, you write down who you talk to. If it's Betty, you say, Betty, can I have the first initial of your last name? So yeah. that if there's ever any questions, you've got this trail of, of documentation where you can communicate with somebody at, at a position that's higher up of everything that you've done and you've worked on. You have to have a paper trail. We'll, we'll tell you why that's important in a little bit. But I mean, I suppose we, you could do it digitally. You could, but what but, we recommend is if you have the folder, put all the bills in there so you have them in order chronologically and staple your phone log to the front of that or keep it on your phone right. or keep it on your computer. But the key is have one place where you write down everybody you talk to. And I'll tell you why it's important in a minute. Okay. What we found out um, going, I mean, we did negotiate that whole kidney stone thing. And thought it was all paid And for. thought it was all done. I mean, we actually think the hospital got overpaid by the insurance company <clears throat> because of all the work Steve put into the neg negotiations. We had a separate file folder for that. And we were cleaning out files from our filing cabinet. And... Steve looked at me and he said, it's been five years, four or five years. Why don't I throw this away? I said, no, <laughs> I don't know why, but I don't feel good about that. I think we should hold on to it. That which darn women's intuition. Crazy. And then lo and behold, six months later, we get a bill from the hospital saying, you did not pay us enough for that whole thing. I think they wanted like 460 We were like, what? You have got to be kidding me. We worked through all that, resolved it, and what we found out was in the state of Arizona, you have up to six years to go through your records and rebill for so situations. Here's, here's how it worked, and we, we went through, we learned a lot. Yes, we process. did. The first mistake we made after negotiating, and this is something you should do whenever you go through a long negotiation, when they agree to pay it in full, ask for a zero balance statement. A written statement. Yes, get it in writing, have it emailed to you, whatever, but get a statement from the medical provider that it's paid in full. Because here's what happens. There are auditing companies that will go to hospitals and regularly say, you know, in this state, in the state of Arizona, they have seven years to review a bill and revise it if there was an error on it. So these medical uh, companies, these, um, accounting companies will come in and say, we'll review your last seven years worth or your last year of bills, whatever it is, because they're expiring. We'll review your bills and we will take a percentage of what we collect. So they don't care about the people. They're just looking for the money and auditing the accounts. So some wise guy got into our account and thought we hadn't paid enough. So they came and they billed us $463. Now that isn't a huge amount on a kidney stone. It's probably a $10,000 kidney stone. Um, but we weren't going to pay it on principle and because we didn't think we owed it, period. 
uh, and because from what our records show, they had been overpaid. So they eventually sent us to collections. Now, I, I tried very hard, and I used my the folder, and I wrote notes to deal with the accounting department. And uh, one day I was at a scout meeting, and I wrote names down, and people wouldn't return my calls, which is unusual. You know, uh, I was at a scout meeting one day, and, and this guy worked for the state the department of the medical board in the state of Arizona. He said, stop trying to deal with the accounting department people. They are just bean counters, and all they're interested in is the money. They aren't going to negotiate with you. You need to go to the, uh, the, the medical board, and if you don't get any satisfaction there, go to the, the CFO of the company. But they sent us to collections, and this was kind of all happening at the same time. I went and met with the collection guy face-to-face. -face. He was not too far from here, which surprised the heck out of him that I'd even want to come in and see him. Uh, he would not relent, and I told him I wasn't going to pay. And, you know, he, he understood that we had good reason. But even though it was sent to collections, I still went back and called the CFO's office. When I read him my list of people I had called, and how they hadn't returned calls, they hadn't followed through, they hadn't sent me their documentation and all that. He said, this is the most thorough research I've ever mm -hmm. seen. I appreciate you sharing it with me. Yes, our accounting department does have some problems. I am going to just write off. We're going to you waive your whole, yeah. we're going to consider this painful. And you did get a paid in full yes, we did. at that we point. Didn't make that mistake again. Right. Okay. The so bottom line is be persistent. Call your state medical board. Look for people who are experts in the field. Call bill advocates. <clears throat> but just know everything is negotiable. And the sooner you start dealing with stuff, like each every hospital has social workers. And if you talk with a social worker on discharge and say, you know, I may need some help with my bills. Can I call you? Whatever. Be proactive. Yes. And know that there's going to be problems. Right. Uh, assume. Assume yeah. that there will be problems. So cover your butts. And keep good records so that you can negotiate through stuff. Yep. Um, it's it's I, I don't want to say it's easy to do, but once you learn how the system works, you can do these medical negotiations and and win. You once you learn how to do it, you can win the game. Yes. Um, and you know, there's a lot mm. of people involved in medical billing, and mistakes are made all the time. There was one time I was trying to get a fax through to a company and the woman it was an older woman and I and I like she kept saying I'm not getting it I'm not getting it and finally I was like, I'm like stay on the phone and we will fax it to you while while you're while we're on the phone turns out she didn't know how to work the fax machine right. so there's all kinds of reasons why things can happen so and things can't go, the, get through the point is the trick there is don't just depend on technology to deliver what you're sending. So if you're right. emailing something, get the person on the phone and have them verbally confirm that they received it and write that down on the log. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, but I once we once had a dentist and we had dental coverage at that time. And the dentist said he talked to somebody that worked for Insurance an insurance company. company and they said at the end of the week they clear their desk throw everything in the trash and just hope no one's going to question what goes on and and if people come back and bug them about unresolved stuff then they'll deal with it so i don't know that medical billing works that way for everything but you do need to be proactive and you can figure it out um and most of the time you know s certainly when hospitals and doctors and if you have procedures, send you a bill, wait for your EOB, which is your explanation of benefits from your insurance company. Because a lot of times the doctors or the hospitals or the procedure places will bill you a full amount and you're going to, you're only going to have to pay a discounted amount because you have insurance. So when people demand full payments up front, we say, no, we'll give you a small deposit but we're not even going to come close to paying you. Don't even pay 50% up front because you need to wait for your EOB. Many times things are discounted even more than 50% when you have medical insurance. Okay, so we're going to wrap up today's show <clears throat> with 10 ways to keep your body healthier. And um, if you have any questions, you know, fire them at the news feed. We'll copy it. We'll try to respond to it. And um, 
and we'll do our best um, to answer, to, to answer yeah. your question. So Teresa says, how easy is it to change doctors under your insurance? You know, every insurance company is going to be a little different, and it seems like uh, there are fewer and fewer doctors that are available on some policies. So you're going to have to do some work. That's one of the things we, we weren't planning on talking about, but we interview doctors. Yeah, we do. And we, we ask them for a 10-minute consultation. It always goes longer. But they'll usually give you a free consultation. Or, come or, in with a list of questions. Yes. And ask you them. always have to have a list of questions. Or make sure you ask your friends and your family. Yes. Literally do a personal survey. Who do you use for your GP? Who do you use for your... Um, uh, OB. OB. Who do you use for your heart doctor? Who do you use for a dermatologist? All those things, you want to get references and recommendations. So just ask all your friends and go with the friends that you know are very frugal in your area. Because a lot of times frugal people do a lot of research for mm -hmm. stuff. Um, also, you can check some online stuff at Yelp or, um, but they're not always good as far as, um, knowing really the doctor's medical performance. They may be good at evaluating bedside manner. Mm -hmm. um, but there's definitely doctors we've used that came highly recommended that we would not use again. Right. So sometimes you don't always, can't always figure things out ahead of time. Okay, so we talked about, you know, eating healthier last week, and we're going to talk about 10 ways to keep your body healthier. And we'll go back and forth. Number one, drink water, lots of water. I know that my folks are finally starting to realize that and they're in their 80s. But for the longest time, they wouldn't drink water. And water is so important to just clean through our bodies, toxins. And if you can't stand water, just plain water, then, you know, put some lemon in it or a little tiny bit of honey or... Or a raspberry or... Uh, yeah, flavor it in some way. There are some flavored waters that you can buy um, that are just lightly, lightly flavored and go with that. Uh, but make sure you're getting water. You can't just drink coffee all day long. You just, you can't. It's not good for your body. Wash your hands. That's what we tell our kids whenever we come home from church. They'd always get sick coming home from church for some reason on a Sunday afternoon. Well, anytime we're in a public, a public place, place, anytime, whether it was the library, um, a store, um, we the first thing we would do is head to the bathrooms and wash hands. And we have a little pump uh, soap dispenser on the kitchen sink. We don't use the regular dish soap because that's a little too strong for your hands. So we just have some, some soap that foams in there and we refill that. But washing your hands, carrying Purell, uh, using the handy <clears throat> wipes when you go into the grocery store. I mean, Home Depot even has handy wipes now. Yes. Wiping the cart down, wiping your hands. We take it back. I usually grab them on my way out. I take them into the car and I wipe the steering wheel down. Or, or, the, and... or the handles of the car door yeah. and the, the tops of the, you know, the, the doors where you might set an arm down or something. Okay, um, get outside and get some sunlight. I know in some of the climates around the country mm -hmm. that can be really tough to do, especially in the wintertime. But they say 20 minutes of sunshine a day is so important for your body to have the proper amount of vitamin D. Even if you're wearing a snorkel coat and you just get it on your face, that will help. Yeah. Seniors <laughs> are notorious for being deficient in vitamin D. And so it's very, very important to make sure you're outside for some time each day to do that. Um, get exercise. <clears throat> um, we have an article on 50 ways to... Get exercise free or for low free. cost, and uh, we'll give you that link in a little bit. But walking, walking your neighborhood. If it's cold outside, walk in a mall. A lot of right. malls are open early in the morning. You can walk inside. Um, a lot of parks have uh, exercise walking paths. Course. Yep, walking paths, and they have places to do sit ups, chin ups, uh, step ups, all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you're a senior, uh, YMCA's have silver sneaker memberships, yes. and they're very low cost benefits. We are going to write an article on low or inexpensive health clubs, health club memberships that you can join. But the truth is, if you're just consistent with working out, uh, working out either walking or jogging or doing something, working in the garden, do it consistently, get 10,000 steps in a day, you're going to be pretty healthy. Also, there's mm -hmm. tons of exercise DVDs. There's YouTube channels that are devoted to exercise um, where you can just you know, flick on your internet, 
your Wi-Fi on your TV and work out. Um, all of our kids do a lot of that stuff. So here's one that a lot of people don't think about. Disinfect your doorknobs, light switches, and your phones. Make sure during cold and flu season, which is now, folks, that you are literally going around the house at least once a week and wiping everything down because people come in and out grabbing those door handles and there's bound to be stuff that's passed um, that way. So mm. make sure, uh, that was actually one of our favorite, our kids' favorite chores when they were little was to disinfect doorknobs, light switches, and, and phones. They would literally fight over that job and I used to have to say, look, once a week and you know we'll put an equal rotation out for it. And so they'd all, so basically, depending on how many kids you have, you know, that's how often they can have that job if they're doing it once a week. Yeah. Okay. We also called it door switches and light knobs. For oh, with, gosh. With dyslexia. Um, <clears throat> learn about herbs and naturopathic uh, cures. We have a book. Here's that one we of our use, favorites. And we'll give you a link to this. We have a whole page of healthy and nutritional type books. The uh, Prescription for Nutritional Healing, this book has been revised several times. But it's our go-to manual if we have uh, back pain, sneezing, uh, eye problems, ear problems. And it recommends uh, just things you can do physically. It recommends nutritional uh, things. And it right. re recommends supplements. Here's another book we think every household should have. It's the American Medical Association Family Medical Guide. And this is great for, like, if you can look up symptoms and follow a trail and and get what what might be a diagnosis. If it's serious, we suggest, you know, you definitely get in to see a doctor or urgent care or emergency room. Um, Abby, our littlest one, got roseola, and I figured it out from this book. I was like, what is going on? She's got a high temperature. <clears throat> she's got a rash. It's not um, chicken pox. And I, and I guessed that it was, I wasn't sure if it was measles and I, and I, and I wasn't sure. And I got her into the doctor and this book told me that it was probably roseola and sure enough it was. And she recovered in a few days, but, um, that was kind of scary. And I was thankful I had that book in the house. Okay. Avoid antibiotics if at all possible. Um, you know, we, we don't, when we're sick and we have a fever, we let the fever burn us up. Yep. And let our if it doesn't get it. too high, I think our our stop gap is like 102. When it gets to 102, then we start on the aspirin. But if you have a, a 99 or 100 or even 101, let your body burn it up. It's it's okay. Just monitor the fever. Um, but but the the fever is an important part of killing stuff in your body. So it's very very important. And we'll talk next week about the herbs we take right. and the essential oils we use right. to fight a cold. We aren't stupid about this. Right. If we we're fighting something and we've got green goop we're coughing right. like crazy right. and we're still running a fever after 2 or 3 days, we're going to go to the doctor. Exactly. Okay. But we are going to try our darndest to fight it beforehand. Oh, and neti pot. I've heard about that. Yes. Mm. Yes. And um and then you've got to figure out, okay, if you have to take antibiotics, make sure you're taking probiotics and make sure you're doing um, fermented stuff. Uh, we've heard that things like sauerkraut and pickles and, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Kefir. Uh, kefir and kombucha tea is good for that. A yogurt is really good for Those probiotics. Put back the good bacteria yes. into your gut. The antibiotic will kill that off so right. your digestion will suffer right so <clears throat> just make sure you you're taking probiotics at the same time when you're on antibiotics doctors are becoming very cautious about prescribing antibiotics because they're building resistance in people and then when people are really sick they can't find antibiotics to work so they don't give them out easily um, and you just need to make sure that you are like I said taking those pro probiotics. Bone broth is supposed to be really good. Mm -hmm. So making soups from bones, making broth, it's okay to throw in some canned broth if that's what you like, but start with a bone mm -hmm. and, and boil it for an hour and make sure you've <clears> got some bone broth. It, it's got healthy stuff for our body. Also, KY number... Kybo. Uh, Kybo. I keep, learned this at a KYBO, YMCA. keep your bowels operating. operating. I learned this at a YMCA camp. We... I was a camp counselor and then I was a camp director 
and every night we would have a sheet we go by talking kids do you go number one today do you go number two today they were tracking their health and especially bowel movements and when enough kids weren't going number two every day the next thing we saw was on the table for lunch or something were going to be prunes or or high fiber fruits and the nurse would monitor this and make sure the kids were going to the bathroom yeah if you need to be having a bowel movement every day i you take it in yep you send it i out. have a friend that does not do that when and i'm first married and i'm concerned <laughs> about her health and her health yeah. down the road so you know two prunes a day two prunes a day that's all you need to keep you moving um apricots dried fruit is really raisins they're all good for keeping things yeah. moving so if you get stopped up just start eating apricots prunes and raisins or leave or leave the peels on your apples right um eat eat more fiber uh, nuts have fiber brand um, sprinkle brand yeah. in your cereal have brand muffins um i've got a great brand muffin recipe on the web on our website moneysmartfamily.com so um you know go with something like that if and you've got a, a medical condition that is just baffling make it your job to learn you want to participate with your doctor bernie siegel wrote a book called love medicine and miracles and he said that the people who got better the fastest were the ones who are a pain in the butt to their doctors they asked questions they challenged their thinking and they participated with the doctor to get better um, i spent five years after we remodeled our backyard suffering with back pain and I was watching YouTube videos, I was reading books, I was putting ice on it, I was stretching, uh, going to physical therapy, and nothing made it better until I got 103 fever. And the next day, it was Well, gone. your fever hit 103, yeah. and that's when I was like, okay, take all the covers off, take off your sweatshirt. Sure, this is rated X. No, <laughs> and I was ready to take him to the emergency room, but when he took all his covers off, and and a sweatshirt and a sweatpants the fever dropped and that's when we gave him some tylenol and then anyway it was good after that but so my point is there are so many resources um books alternative medicine youtube don't just listen to the doctor i mean listen to your doctors find a good one participate with them do your research you will get better faster yes if you take action on yes your own. There's a movie out there called Lorenzo's Oil. It's about a child that had um, a disability and the doctors couldn't figure it out. And the parents ended up, specifically. ended up doing amazing amounts of research and they came up with this oil mixture. Was it autism that he had? Mm, it was, I can't uh, remember I don't, what, what some, it was. Some, his body wasn't processing, nerves were deteriorating. I, I can't remember, anyway, it was just, a, I was they, sitting there crying watching this movie because the dad was so determined to find an answer and it wasn't enough to save their child but it was enough to save hundreds of kids later yes research yep just go after it yes. and then build a library get these books um don't be afraid to to be different yes uh there are there's no one way to live life there's no one way to get healthy um but you're going to find the way that works for you i, I can tell you this and that's dad his body is different yes. than most people and you know medicine is made for the middle of the road it's expected to behave this way in most people but there are going to be people on both ends of the spectrum where a medication is not going to work properly and we almost lost him yes. when they, a doctor prescribed a thyroid medication that's that he should for, never have been taking for 50 or 60 years but in people over the age of 70 men men over it, the age of 70 it can be it lethal can, it can and be it lethal. almost killed him and we the doctors didn't think it was possible we did the research we found a research study i read through it i understood most of the words in it and, and we, we were like get study. him off of this stuff and as soon as we stopped it the he got better and he got better so, so just know that medicine is a science but it's not the same for everybody your body may respond differently to a medication or a natural supplement or whatever do what's best for you but you got to be the expert don't be afraid of the research it's actually quite invigorating when you get in there and start researching whatever you're dealing with it is a really really cool thing to empower yourself to learn our our son joe um two of our kids are adopted and our son joe had severe asthma 
right after we adopted him. He was a little bit younger than two years old. And I was at my wits end. I, my, my sister growing up had asthma. So I just started researching all kinds of things. I came up with herbs that I could give him. I mean, the wind would literally blow and he wouldn't be able to breathe. And we did end up with a nebulizer machine so that he could, but I did everything I could to help um, boost up his immune system and um, learn what kinds of natural supplements and herbs he could take. And we found if he went into a bathtub with Epsom salts right away, that would help when his asthma started to hit. I ended up putting grapeseed oil on his chest and on his back. It ruins whatever clothes he's in, but when he would have bouts of asthma, they could last for several days. And the grapeseed mm. oil just kicked a heck out of it. Mm. And um, that was something I discovered later on. Then we and, used lobelia, which is a stimulant. It's a liquid right, based. Right. Uh, we used a lot of different things. Fenugreek and thyme. Right. These right. are all things we researched right. over right. time, talking to people. Yep. And we got him through that to the point where his asthma was not a problem by the time he was about... 12 or 13 years old, once a year, he would have about, right. he played baseball. Right. Outside a lot. Oh yeah. And the dust. And now he has zero asthma. Right. So we had to work long, long and hard on his medical condition, but it's gone. It okay. is gone. So we'll wrap this up. Um, we talked about how to you know, understand what your insurance policy covers, that you need to be an expert on that at least. So, you know, the basic coverages we uh, talked about how uh, tax-advantaged accounts can help you save money and reduce the amount of taxable income you have. We talked about smart ways to resolve medical claims, to be a bulldog or get a bulldog on your side. Bill Advocates is a great resource if you have high medical bills and nobody's willing to help you. Um, and next week, we're going to well, we talk about 10 ways to stay 10 healthy. 10 ways to stay healthy. Next yep. week, we're going to talk about uh, rules for hospital stays. We have rules. Oh, gosh. Nobody stays alone, and we'll tell you why. Oh, we have all kinds uh, of things to do when you have a loved one in the hospital. And okay. what you should bring to the doctor's office right. when you go in, and it's not what you think. Right. And uh, how to save on prescription drugs. Yes. Uh, how to save on medical equipment. Durable medical you equipment. You wouldn't believe what we paid for a, uh, a knee brace. Oh, my gosh. Honey, that's... It was, it was amazing. And um, what to do about dental care and how to cure the common cold. Okay, so this is Annette and Steve Economitis. And if you like this, give us a thumbs up. Yes. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the little notification bell so you know next time we're live, you'll get notified. And uh, if you share this with your friend or share it on your playlist on YouTube or on uh, Facebook, yep. we would appreciate it. Yes. And we'll see you next week, Friday yes. night, getting crazy with medical care. It's yes. So Steve and Annette Economitis from MoneySmartFamily.com. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Well, we're still live. Hold on. Here we go. Joycaster and the broadcast. This whole thing has been so weird. Now the show notes have last week's notes in them. So you may... Wait, wait, wait.